In this lesson, we will look at doctrinal attempts to justify the bank deposit contract as it is carried out today, that is, with a fractional reserve ratio. We must understand that a practice as widespread as we have seen this to be throughout the world, especially following the Peel Act, a practice which consists of bankers appropriating the most significant part of demand deposits to use them in their personal business deals, specifically loans, a practice so widespread, which arises from a privilege governments grant to these economic agents, bankers, but to no other economic agent, whether a natural person or a legal entity. Such a practice could not be maintained indefinitely without finding some way of defending it, some way of trying to legitimize such behavior, even if only on the surface. Furthermore, the banking world is full of vested interests. Banks are very powerful, and it should not surprise us that bankers have devoted substantial resources and have used their considerable influence to try to give a suitable legal veneer to the type of activity they engage in. So, in this chapter, we will study the two major attempts which, from the standpoint of legal doctrine, have been made to justify the behavior of bankers regarding the use of a fractional reserve with monetary bank deposits. As I have said, from the legal perspective, theorists have tried to offer basically two alternative explanations for this behavior. The first group of theories, in support of this banking practice, rest on an attempt to identify the deposit contract with the loan contract. The second group of theories start from the acknowledgement that what the first group were intended to accomplish is impossible. That is, that it is impossible to identify the deposit contract with the loan contract. And though this second group, which are the majority within legal doctrine, begin with the recognition that the deposit contract cannot possibly be identified with the loan contract, they then offer the following apparent solution. The recognition that what bankers receive in a deposit is paired with a redefinition of the concept of availability. Availability loses its true meaning, that is, the constant maintenance of 100% of the tantundum at the disposal of the depositor, so that whenever he or she goes to withdraw the money, it is there. Instead, the concept of availability is redefined. Now, availability means compliance with a set of regulations from the central bank and the prudent investment of depositors' resources. We will analyze in a little more detail each of these two doctrinal positions and show that they are theoretically groundless and that from the legal and economic points of view they fail to justify what they are intended to justify.